That was great, thanks. Um, actually, um, they were play, paying a tribute this morning to Tom Petty on the radio, so <laughs> that's great. Well, welcome again, everyone, on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm so glad to see you all here today and that we can gather as one mind, one heart, one soul. Uh, last week, we started our series on the Beatitudes. Um, these blessings are part of the Sermon on the Mount, one of the most famous of Jesus's teachings, and um, many think it's a summary of all his teachings. Um, some people treat the Beatitudes as a New Testament version of the Ten Commandments, but that's not what the intention was. Jesus began his ministry with people who felt rejected by or at best uncomfortable with the religious faith and structure of their day. They come to believe that just as there was no place for them in the kingdom of Israel, so there was no place for them in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus wanted to shake them out of their spiritual lethargy, to teach them that the challenges that seemed to be defeating them were in fact good news. In truth, feelings of re restlessness and discontent are a sign that an awakening has become. It's a sign that there's a transition going on. And isn't that, that, isn't that how most of us started on our spiritual journey by deep being discontent with our lives, maybe searching for something more, thinking that there must be a better way? Each of us could have been on that mount waiting to hear a message that would take us on a new journey. For those listening to Jesus, their discontent had nothing to do with theological concepts and everything to do with getting through a day. This can't be enough, they were saying. And Jesus' response was, you're absolutely right. It isn't nearly enough. So the Beatitudes are a bridge from the practical challenge of living in a dualistic world, world to the even more practical spiritual truth of infinite possibility that is always available to us. We talked about what exactly the word blessed might mean. We were reminded that it's often translated as happy, but that doesn't capture all that it's intended, primarily because of how we've devalued the term happy. Blessed in this sense is an explan explanation of an inner joy, a peace that comes with being aligned with God. And when we're aligned with God, the results are peace, joy, love. Now happiness may be a part of it, but happiness in the world is fleeting. So we're talking about a happiness that transcends what happens in the world around us. A happiness that comes to the soul from being in alignment with God. This is why it's a call or we're called to rejoice under any circumstance. Scripture says rejoice in all things. So Jesus using the word blessed is a declaration and a pledge of the reward of a, that inner spiritual journey. And again, we keep in mind who these messages were intended for. They were for the Hebrew people who are deep in their traditions, deep in their domestication, their training. Jesus was here giving them new hope. So the first two we already looked at were blessed are the poor in, in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Today we're looking at the next two. The third beatitude is blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Now the dictionary defines meek as quiet, gentle, easily imposed on, submissive. But in the Hebrew Bible, the meek are those who have a spirit of gentleness, of self-control. They are free from malice and condescending spirit. 
Being meek is being patient, not easily angered, and not think of, thinking of yourself as too highly or being with arrogance. Um, if it's being submissive to anything, it's being submissive to the spirit, to the essence of our being. So we can read this as blessed as they are gentle, for they will inherit the earth. A bad example of meekness or gentleness were the Pharisees. They would make sure that people knew that they were fasting and praying and seemed proud about what they were doing for God. So it was all about, look at me, look at what I'm doing. I'm so holy. That's not what Jesus is talking about. It's the opposite. God is looking for us to do these things without putting on a show for others. We're just doing it for God. Jesus said that what you do for the least of your brothers and sisters you do for me. So it's doing it without looking for the approval from others, without looking for notoriety, keeping the ego in check, doing a nice kind thing for someone is what we're meant to do. Because when we're truly loving one another, when we're truly functioning from the knowledge of who we truly are, we can't do anything other than love. And like the song I used for the opening prayer, we look for the good in everything and in everyone because we see beyond the ego to truth. Meekness is not weakness. The meek are gentle. They practice non-resistance such as Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Dr. Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela. The meek do not exploit or oppress others. They are not given to vengeance or vendettas. They're not violent. They don't try to seize power for their own ends. In short, they've emulated the nature of Jesus in their lives and learned from him. This doesn't mean that they are weak or ineffective in life. They may be gentle and humble, but they can and do champion the needs of the weak and the oppressed. Emmett Fox believes that this is one of the most important statements in Jesus's life, the key to his life, the secret of overcoming every kind of difficulty. Now the term earth in this beatitude means manifestation or expression, the result of cause. Inherit the earth means to have dominion over the outer experience to have power to bring our conditions into harmony and, and success, regardless of what's going on. So meek is a combination of open-mindedness, faith, and the realization that God is always good and only wants good for us. Now the Hebrew Bible teaching is based on strict adherence to the mechanics of cause and effect, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This is the accepted standard of worship for, but Jesus focuses on the present. He presents something different. Jesus presents God as pure spirit, father, absolute good. This is a very different way to worship. It's to worship God as spirit. So the Sermon on the Mount, these Beatitudes, reveal a new way of thinking, a new way of praying. And this is really clear in the Aramaic translations of this Beatitude, which are healthy are those who have softened what is rigid within. They shall receive physical vigor and strength from the universe. Another translation is aligned with the one are the humble. Those submitted to God's will, they shall be gifted with the productivity of the earth. So that's something that softening is opening up. It's letting go of preconceived notions. And when we do that, we allow spirit to move through us. We allow spirit to strengthen us so that we can move through our lives with peace, love, and joy. 
This is about spiritual domestication as opposed to being domesticated by the lower patterns of our mind, our ego. When we do this, we become aligned with the one and we're open to receive the bounty of good that is inherently ours. Now, the fourth beatitude is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The Aramaic translation is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for physical justice and righteousness. They shall be surrounded by what is needed to sustain their bodies. Righteousness means right conduct as well as right thinking. We're reminded that what we see outside of us is merely the expression or outpicturing of our inner thoughts and beliefs. We're reminded that we have dominion and power over our thoughts and our beliefs. We can only change what, what's happening on the outside by changing what's happening on the inside. As within, so without. So here we're being reminded not to be discouraged because we don't, we don't over, overcome everything at once or if our progress seems to be slow. We're reminded that if we are stuck or not progressing as fast as we would like, we must be careful to hold on to our, our harmonious thoughts, our thoughts that are aligned with spirit. To make it even more interesting, two additional Aramaic versions are, healthy are those who turn their mouths to receive a new birth of universal stability. They shall be encircled by the birth of a new society. We're here to usher in a new society. We're here to usher in this new thought. We're here to usher in what Jesus has taught us, that God is within. That there is good in everyone and everything. Another trans a translation is aligned with the one are those who wait up at night, weakened and dried out inside by the unnatural state of the world. They shall receive satisfaction. What we see in the world is an unnatural state. Our natural state is love. Our natural state is peace. So the key again lies in understanding what righteousness means. In Jesus' time, it meant something different. Now it means being moral. But instead of being a moral code, what Jesus meant was is that it means being filled with a holy presence, knowing that we are tuned and anchored to source, to that presence. Righteousness means being directly connected to this presence. It's a fierce and solid ground that we've ever experienced. And it speaks to the intensity of that. This beatitude promises that when this hunger, this yearning occurs, it means we're really spirit seeking spiritual fulfillment. When this hunger rises within us, we're to go within for that fulfillment. This hunger could mean not feeling connected. And so when we're not feeling connected, we go in to find that connection instead of looking for it outside ourselves or looking for it in another person or in a substance to fill that void. Permanent satisfaction can only come when we go within. Because any satisfaction we may find outside ourselves is only temporary. This hunger, this yearning is an invitation to go inside, to look within, to feel that holy presence and be aware of this presence. The mystic Meister S. Eckert said, the eye with which you seek God is the eye with which God sees you. This eye is one. It's one and the same. 
There's nothing to seek because it's already there. There is no separation, only oneness. So this beatitude is telling us that those who seek God, seek connection with God, will be satisfied. That's what's meant by healthy are those who turn their mouths to receive the birth of universal stability. God is the universal stability. They shall be encircled by the birth of a new society. That universal stability is knowing that we are not separate. That new society is oneness. The other translation, aligned with the one, are those who wait up at night, weakened and dried out inside by an untranscial state of the world. They shall receive satisfaction. That unnatural state being spoken of here is believing we are separate. It's the ego thought system. That's the unnatural state. True satisfaction comes when we go within and we realize and know who we are. There's only one. There's only God. And when we know that, truly know that about ourselves, we can and will see it in everyone. The Hebrew Bible and the law of Moses, which is the Ten Commandments, taught how to behave in the world, which was necessary for survival. The higher, higher and greater dimensions of the law, as taught by Jesus, present love and good as the only enduring reality. They don't just tell us how to behave properly in order to survive. They point the way for our consciousness to begin evolving towards regeneration and perfection. The Beatitudes are remarkable for, for the fact that they describe mostly negative states, but call them blessed. Because when we open ourselves to God, the negativity of any state is transformed into the blessing we gain by overcoming whatever is going on and receiving the love and the knowledge and the awareness of overcoming those obstacles. That blessedness is in each of those negative states that are being spoken of. The blessing comes with the offer of the possibility of shifting, shifting from the lack and limitation the world offers, shifting to know we have a choice, a choice to remain in a state of suffering or a choice to move within and access and align ourselves to the awareness the ever, of that ever-present divinity which we are, which is always there, that we can never, ever be separate from. When we do that, the negative state is transformed into a true blessing. Yes, there can be difficult difficulties among us and we see in the world. And yes, it can be difficult at times to go within and practice what Jesus is teaching. But with the help of spirit, with prayer, meditation, contemplation, we can use all that is available to obtain the clarity of mind and find righteousness within ourselves, for ourselves and for all. Remember, we're all in this together. And as we awaken for ourselves, we awaken all minds because there is only one mind. And now I invite you to get comfortable in your seats as we move into meditation. Just allow yourself to sit comfortably to let go and allow your breath to relax you with each breath you take. You feel your muscles relaxing, 
You feel your thoughts slowing down and you focus on the presence, the here and now, this very moment. Yes, we know that Jesus is teaching us a new way of thinking, a new way of being, reminding us always that for every problem, there is a solution. And each of the problems that come to us is a blessing in disguise. For we are truly blessed by anything that causes us to go within, that causes us to do that deep inner searching, that causes us to let go of the ego thoughts and move into the truth. Deep within us, is the very essence of our being, the very essence of who we are. And we can remember this. We remember this by asking the Holy Spirit to help clear our thoughts of anything negative, of any unforgiveness we may have. So that as we release all that which does not serve us, we connect more and more easily to our divine essence, to our divine truth, that we are and always have been one with God. We allow ourselves to use any negativity that comes to us, knowing we can transform it to peace, to joy, to love. By allowing the spirit within, the Christ within to take over, to transform our thoughts, our mind, and our outlook. Being in the world is not easy at times. Being human is not easy, but we have a choice. We can go within, we can ask spirit for help. We can transform any negative thought, any negative experience. We can't transform that. We can see it rise up as smoke to be gone as we usher in the truth of who we are, the joy and the peace that comes from that knowledge, from that awareness, from that experience. So right now in this very moment, I invite you to go within, to go to that inner sanctuary where there is only peace, there is only joy, there is only love. Feel that presence within you. Feel that joy that you are. And feel it getting stronger and stronger as you go deeper and deeper into the silence.
And now we bring to mind anyone who may be in need of prayer. All those on our unity prayer list or on the silent unity list and for ourselves. We affirm that there's a presence and power within them that will see them through any difficulty that they are experiencing in their human form. We know that they are one with God, perfect, health, healthy and whole in every way. And we know this for ourselves too. We also pray for the elevation of consciousness of all our world leaders and all those in a position of power. May their rigidity be softened. May they understand the true meaning of meek and offer service to all people that they serve. And now I'd like you to bring your consciousness back into your body, back into the room where you are. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And this is the portion of our service where we have the opportunity to give. So I invite you to take your gifts in your hand or visualize whatever form with which you give. We know that giving and receiving is the same. So as we give, we open up our arms to receive all the good that God has for us. We know that we give from our hearts because we are part of that ever evolving giving and taking, that ebb and flow of life. And I invite you to bless these gifts with me. So please mute your mics and bless these gifts with me. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give and all that I am open to receive. And I am grateful.